Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming out on uh, this May 1st press conference. We're going to give an update on COVID-19 uh, with the city of Joliet. I have an update from the Will County Health Department. We have representatives from Amita St. Joe's uh, who are, will speak, and then Jen Howard from the Chamber of Commerce. So again, thank you for coming out. Um, today's update, and these numbers are actually from last night, so this is fluid, but the city of Joliet is reporting 685 known uh, positive COVID cases. 90 um, have been transported by our fire department. Of the 685, 99 are from Joliet Nursing Homes. The first positive case in Joliet was on March 21st, and we know that 395 of the 685 cases are more than two weeks old. So the consensus seems to be that after two weeks, the virus has passed through the system. We don't have hard data on that because there is no one retesting these patients or reporting back that they have been cured or, or relieved of the virus. Um, to date, we are reporting 55 deaths in the city of Joliet. Uh, the fire department prepared a couple of graphs, um, the positive cases reported. What you'll see, I think, looking at that is that there really isn't any trend. Um, some of the spikes have occurred when nursing homes have, or, or when the Illinois Department of Public Health has reported what's coming out of the nursing homes. But um, it doesn't seem to be any real pattern right now as far as what's being reported in Joliet. So the, the efforts that we've been doing the last four or five weeks are going to continue. Um, speaking specifically about Joliet Nursing Homes, I do have some information. The Illinois Department of Public Health is publishing what happens inside the, the Joliet Nursing Homes. They don't report to the city or to the Will County Health Department. They put out their report weekly. So I have numbers going back to last Sunday on um, April 26th. There will be an update this Sunday. As of last week, um, the Illinois Department of Public Health is notifying us that they are reporting anyone inside the nursing homes who is symptomatic as positive, whether they have or have not been tested. So with that in mind, uh, the report for Symphony of Joliet is 93 positive cases with 26 deaths. Only four of the, co or Symphony is reporting that only four of the COVID patients inside their facility are still on the premises. Our Joliet Fire Department has transported 12 patients from Symphony of Joliet, and the last call to the city of Joliet was on April 12th for the fire department assistance. Villa Franciscan is reporting 41 positive cases with eight deaths. Um, the Joliet Fire Department has taken three positive patients transported from that facility. The last call to the city from Villa Franciscan was on April 20th. The park at Joliet on uh, Hame Street is reporting 28 positive cases with four deaths. Again, the fire department has reported four transports from that facility. The last call uh, for the fire department was on April 28th. Sunny Hill Nursing Home on Doris is reporting seven positive, 17 positive cases with two deaths. The fire department is reporting doing one transport from Sunny Hill. And the last call uh, to our city was on April 22nd. Joliet Terrace on McDonough Street is reporting two positive cases with no deaths. Um, this is, these are new cases. There were no reports from Joliet Terrace last week. Um, Joliet Fire Department received a call yesterday, um, responded to Joliet Terrace. And Rosewood Care at 3401 Hennepin, um, we have no reporting directly from the Illinois Department of Public Health. However, the Will County Health Department is reporting two positive cases from Rosewood Care. Um, I'll turn it over to Amita St. Joe's. Um, they are here. I do want to thank um, Herb Buchanan for taking some time out to uh, speak to us today. Herb, if you want to give an update at St. Joe's. Sure, I'd like to, and thank you for having me. And uh, in light of the publicity surrounding hospital visits, I'm starting off with my mask, but I'll assure everyone I'm in my office alone, so I'll take it off to communicate a little bit better. So uh, in concert with what the, the mayor was sharing, let me start with some updates and I'll leave some time for questions. Today, we have 40 positive COVID patients and 30 PUIs, and that, that number changes from day to day as tests come back. And so sometimes the COVID number creeps up a little bit. Sometimes the, the PUO, PUIs drop a little bit. Um, to date, we've had 504 COVID positive patients. We've had 101 COVID discharges, so that's always good news. We tend to have anywhere from, from nine to 26 positive cases a day. So it varies quite a bit. I would say now is a period that seems to have leveled off a little bit. So when you hear about, you hear folks talk about leveling off the curve, 
for uh, the last week to, to two weeks, the numbers have been more in the, in the 40 range. A couple of weeks ago, uh, when we were at the press conference, we were having them creep up into the 70 range, which is uh, quite a bit more concerning. Um, so it's stable. it has stabilized a bit. Uh, we've had anywhere from 11 to 30 ICU patients over the last 30 days. So that, that has also varied. So just as you think about capacity, we've had uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 discharges a day, and our census has been anywhere from 120 to 170. So COVID has been anywhere from maybe a quarter to as much as a third, possibly a little bit more of our, of our total volume. Uh, and that's, that again has stabilized. For ICU, we've had as many as 31 ICU beds occupied with COVID patients. We have uh, 32 staffed ICU beds. You can see when that capacity gets challenged, 57 beds available, but sometimes and quite often staffing is the constraint there. Uh, I'll move a little bit to uh, PPE because there's a lot of concern about whether we have the equipment to keep staff, physicians, and, and patients safe. Uh, at this point, we have no concerns. We are using about 330 N95 masks per day, and those are most important for folks who are dealing with COVID positive patients, particularly where there's uh, a potential for droplets being in the air. We have 31,000 N95s on hand. Just to put that in perspective, we have 100 days of inventory at the current use, and the important thing is the current use. So should there be a surge and we have a spike in usage, of course, then that 100 days could shrink considerably. So we feel comfortable where we are now at the current utilization. Some of the other PPEs, uh, face shields, we have 340 days available. Mask, uh, since we've gone to the universal masking policy, all staff and all, and all visitors are wearing masks. We have 130 days worth of masks. Uh, where we're currently challenged with, is with gowns, disposable gowns, and that's true of everybody in the country. So no mystery there, and having access to major sponsors like Ascension Health and Advent Health, who are our sponsors, where we have national and international sourcing on those. We've had a significant um, outpouring of support from the community. We've had uh, babes, hot dogs, hot rods uh, do a weekly parade around the hospital with their vehicles. Uh, honking their horns and shouting out to healthcare workers. We've had a number of folks make contributions, a lot of food. Yesterday we had world's finest chocolate delivered chocolate bars. Uh, Joliet Junior College Athletics have made contributions. Darcy Motors has offered discounts. So the outpouring of support from the community has been extremely gratifying. Our, our staff and patients appreciate that. And so we want to we want to acknowledge folks for that. Uh, but Mayor, why don't I pause there and see if there are any questions? Well, let me finish okay. and then I'll, I'll open up for questions. But okay, sure. Herb, I just, you know, go off script a little bit. You guys have done a great job over there. I want to thank you on behalf of the city and the Joliet City Council. Um, the, the service that you and your staff have provided has been second to none. So thank you very much. And thank you for, help, for participating today. Thank you. Um, Silver Cross Hospital was unable to make it today. I do have some brief numbers from Silver Cross. To date, they are reporting treating 1,388 patients. Currently, they have 64 people in isolation. Um, 12 are persons under investigation. 52 are confirmed positive for COVID-19. They are reporting 26 available ventilators, so they appear to be um, have a handle on this also. And to date, they have discharged 196 COVID-19 patients. So again, thank you, St. Joe's, and thank you, Silver Cross. Um, Regarding Stateville, I have nothing new to report. I know they still have positive COVID patients on site, but the National Guard um, has, has it under control. There are positive uh, COVID staff and prisoners, but again, everything appears to be under control in Stateville. Regarding the Will County Health Department, uh, Sue Olenek emailed me this morning. She was unable to make it, but I have information from Sue. Um, as of last night, Will County has a total of 2,510 cases. Uh, the breakdown is 1,179 COVID-19 patients are males, 1,323 are females. Um, that's who's tested positive. There are eight of unknown gender due to incomplete documentation. Um, there have been 153 COVID-19 deaths in Will County. In the last 24 hours, the Illinois Department of Public Health has processed 13,200 specimens 
uh, for a total of 269,867 specimens that have been processed within the state of Illinois. Um, the COVID-19 hotline that the county uh, uh, operates is still under oper er, operating. Um, the number of calls they are reporting has dim diminished greatly. They began with six operators and they're down to two or three operators answering calls each day. The hotline number for the Will County Health Department COVID-19 hotline is 815-740-8977. Um, Sue wanted me to report that the CDC has expanded the list of symptoms. Um, in addition to fever, cough, shortness of breath, um, they are now are, are seeing symptoms as headache, chills with possible repeated shaking, headache and or muscle pain, sore throat, and a loss of taste or a loss of smell. Um, the health department is now also working with the Illinois Attorney General's Office to investigate complaints concerning conditions and or social distancing violations at workplaces. I know my office has been getting a number of calls the last couple of weeks about this. Uh, residents are able to contact the Attorney General's Office via email. That is workplacerights at atg.state.il.us or a newly established hotline for the Attorney General's Office 1-844-740-5076. Um, it's I'm being told the Attorney General's Office will contact the Health Department if there's a need to investigate. So again, we'll put that information out on our website, but um, that's new. So thank you for Sue Olenek and Will County Health Department and for the great work they're doing over there. Um, finally then, I want to talk briefly about the Governor's Executive Order, which takes effect today. Uh, the city of Joliet is treating all these orders as valid. I know there's court challenges and a lot of arguments. We're, we're, we're taking the governor's recommendations seriously, and we're treating them as if the orders are valid. Um, some of the modifications that take effect as of today regarding face coverings, if, you're, if, if someone's in a public place, uh, specifically if they are inside a public place and they are unable to maintain the social distancing of six feet, they're required to wear a face mask. Um, essential retail stores will remain open as they have been. The governor is ordering that they re reduce capacity to 50%. The governor is also ordering that they um, reconfigure their stores to provide for one-way aisles and other ways to uh, keep social distancing possible. They also, uh, those employers now have to provide face coverings to all employees who cannot social distance while they're at work. And the governor is ordering that they discontinue the use of reusable bags. <clears throat> um, as of today, non-essential retail stores are allowed to open statewide. Um, they are allowed to take orders online or over the phone, and they are allowed to service customers um, either by delivery or with curbside pickup and delivery. So some state parks are reopened as of today. Golf courses are reopening across the state as of today with conditions, and pet grooming are also reopening as of today. Um, the governor last night issued an order regarding gaming. All gaming facilities are going to remain closed moving forward. And then finally, the, the governor's new order still encourages people to stay at home or to avoid travel and stay at home when possible. So then um, specifically here for Joliet City Hall, we are in the process. We are beginning to, to reintegrate employees back into City Hall. We've been closed for uh, several weeks now with the idea that we are going to get our, our work staff back up to full staffing and hopefully have City Hall open in the next few weeks. Um, but again, we're, we're following the orders from the CDC, from the Will County Health Department, and from the Governor's Office. So at that time, um, or at this time, I have Jen Howard from the Joliet Chamber of Commerce who's here, want to address us. Thank you, Jen. If you can step up. Thank you, Mayor. The Chamber continues to send out emails daily and includes the most recent detailed and comprehensive listing of all relevant information relating to COVID-19. Some of what is included are access to funding, the Small Business Association EIDL loan, CARES Act PPP, State of Illinois emergency loans, and local grants. You can find a responsible rehiring and reopening checklist, all up-to-date details of the governor's stay-at-home order, updates on unemployment insurance, FMLA, paid sick leave, workers' compensation, employee benefits, and guidance for self-employed and independent contractors. Local information on programs, lodging, and food are available, um, food available in our community. 
and as always, state and federal news regarding current and pending legislation. The Chamber has a local survey that remains open, and we encourage all businesses to take a few minutes to participate. Some of the results include 71% of participants responded that they are still open in some type of format. Of those, 78% report having to modify the way they do business. 69% of the participants responded that they have applied for the PPP or the EIDL funds or state funds, and of those, 26 have received funding, 26%. 49% have laid off furloughed employees or had a combination of the two, and 38% plan to bring back them as soon as possible. 71% responded that from low to high rating, that the pandemic has had a high impact on their business. When asked about their current concerns, answers ranged from having no revenue. Um, if they open, will customers come? Will there always be a lack of PPP, PPE and sanitation supplies? And when, they, when and how will they reopen? And what will that look like? What they are looking for um, from the chamber is information on procedures on how to reopen, assist with advertising and communication, and continue to share critical information covering the various programs and opportunities available. The chamber is hosting a webinar series for all members and non-members on timely and relevant topics due to the pandemic. They include today's webinar at one o'clock with Congressman Foster on federal updates, Next week, on Wednesday, we have Sue Olenek from the Will County Health Department. Friday is a city update from the mayor, Mayor Odekirk. And the following week, on the 13th, we have an update with Silver Cross and Amita St. Joe's Hospitals. And there are more to come. The chamber, chamber, along with many area chambers, are promoting the Blue Ribbon Program, honoring first responders and healthcare workers. Hang, tie, or post a blue ribbon physically or virtually at your business or residence uh, to show support. All of this information and all the updates can be found on our website, joliatchamber.com, and check out our social media sites. You can also find an extensive list of open and closed businesses with their operating procedures. If you'd like to update or add your business, contact us at info at joliatchamber.com. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'll open up. This. If there's any questions, be happy to answer them. Yes? You said your office has been getting some calls as well about social distancing complaints. What kind of businesses are you getting those? A, a lot of them are coming out of some of the warehouses um, without getting specific that there's complaints that they um, either weren't issued the proper gear or that they were not um, practicing social distancing. They didn't think their employers were doing enough. So we have referred those complaints uh, to the Illinois Department of Public Health. And again, now there's, there's more, um, I think, more stringent rules for employers that, that go into effect as of today. There have been some rallies uh, uh, against the governor's stay at home or in Joliet is more planned for this weekend. Uh, can you comment on those uh, rallies being held on the street corners? And uh, if you have any thoughts about uh, whether the governor's stay at home order should be loosened more? Yeah, I, I haven't been contacted with any of those rallies. I know our police department has, I don't know if there's anything to report we got a response, but no, I haven't, I haven't had no contact with the rally uh, holders or the people looking to do this. As far as the governor's orders, I think the Governor Pritzker and President Trump are, are um, they're given more information than we're given at the local level. I think our job is to disseminate what's being given to us by the Will County Health Department by the Illinois Department of Public Health and by the CDC. And I think we're doing it effectively here in Joliet. I think all the local municipalities are, from what I've seen. You mentioned uh, the casino is going to stay closed. Um, obviously, that's the most immediate impact on city revenue. Any updates on the impact on all this on city revenue and how it's affecting what your serv or your, your budget or your services? Yeah, probably nothing beyond um, the meeting we had a couple weeks ago where Jim Gadotti presented <laughs> Um, estimates to the city w with uh, the, the tax that we aren't receiving we're probably going to feel the full impact in around June or July and have an idea of, of how much uh, we're losing in current revenues I think the projections are 
that we're losing somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of our current revenue. So um, again, we we know that that this is coming, that the hit is coming. Um, the issue, I think, for myself and, and other mayors and other city officials is how quickly are we going to rebound out of this? Nobody knows, but I know with the, um, the conversations I've had with various mayors throughout Illinois, that's basically um, everyone has the same concerns. We know what we're facing. We just don't know when the end of it's going to be and when things are going to go back to normal. Do you or, or Jen have any information as to what, what are there retailers that you know that are reopening today under the new conditions allowed, uh, for example, at the mall? I don't have a specific list. I think in days to come, we will have that information. I know what the restaurants that had stayed open um, during this period, the chamber and the city and, and other entities, I think WJOL, were putting it out there for local people. So I expect there'll be an updated list as this goes on. Um, but no, I, For, for people at home, the, the report was that Pandora, the jewelry store at the mall, is going to be reopening for Mother's Day and they're going to do curbside. I think um, a lot of these retailers, again, this is a brave new world for them, so it's probably going to be uh, test and fail. But I would expect updates from the chamber and from the city moving forward. All right, well, thank you for coming out. I do want to wish everyone a great weekend. I know the weather is going to be terrific. So, uh, again, this is a difficult period, but I really... Um, Herb, I know you uh, spoke about the, the volunteerism and, and what you've been giving from our community. The response from Joliet residents has been terrific. So again, I want to thank everyone. Herb, thank you and your staff, our first responders, our medical professionals. Jen, thank you for coming out and address us and have a happy and healthy weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.